Yes, guys. Um, welcome to the Once You're In, You're In podcast uh, special episode. Um, this is basically like a more of a topical thing just because of the time of the year um, and the fact that a lot of people this time of year are getting ill based on the weather, based on socialising a lot. You know, over Christmas, you may be going and seeing family that you don't see a lot. New Year's, you may be going out, socialising, nights out, drinking, etc. A lot of people are ill. A lot of people have got COVID at the minute um, or just got a cold, etc. Yeah. So we're going to do a little episode on how to prevent getting ill, how to reduce your likelihood of getting ill, and how if you are noticing signs of illness, how to manage it, You know things that you can implement, what you should be doing when it comes to training, uh, what you should be doing when it comes to expenditure, etc. So yeah, you know this week we've probably both had quite a lot of clients. Yeah, who I have feel been like Ill. I'd say seventy percent of my check-ins are just talking about like what to do and yeah. how a lot to of people kind of are, manage a lot things. Of people are Ill, but it yeah. makes sense, you know, if you think about it, like when you're going and, and spending more time with people that you don't see a lot, or when you're going out and when you're not sleeping as well, when you're drinking alcohol, etc., like your your body's not used to that. If you're somebody who is, let's say, quote unquote into bodybuilding into fitness etc you're usually looking after yourself most of the time if you then have a week where yeah. the you average don't... individual and not to say people who bodybuild are higher than the average individual no, but, but the but... average individual probably feels naff most of the time yeah but they don't realize because their sleep's awful they don't they're not properly hydrated yeah. so it's more apparent when you're like oh, i'm used to actually feeling like pretty good and then you feel maybe 60 70 percent you're like this is not good this yeah. is noticeable so i feel like what we need to do is we need to kind of break things up so you mentioned training should we say should we go into that later or do you want to I kind think of we specify should, i think we should first of all discuss how to reduce the chances of getting ill okay so if we're talking about let's say person exposure like be clever like i feel like a lot of times especially when it comes to the festive period into new year's you have that in between period and it's like well, i'm going out on new year's i've been with the family i'm seeing loads of family and that's not to say i oh, don't see your friends and stay family locked in. stay locked in don't sp- don't spend that's any the time end of the video. however i try and if anything kind of separate it and actually break things up to a slightly better degree and also at the same time just not being an idiot a lot of people will go out like let's say they'll have something on the saturday let's say that's just gone they then have new year's they then spend new year's day with somebody else and it's like they're routine and structure is a complete mess they're waking up at completely different times their hydration is pretty awful so as a rule of thumb i'd almost say just be clever like pick your social times but don't pick them so they're like stacked on top of each three four nights in a row going out you're probably going to get ill yeah um yeah there's loads of different things that we could cover so like we'll just try and sort of like rattle through them so first of all we'll just be like personal hygiene this is something that i think people neglect massively which i find crazy because People if will COVID's be. COVID's not taught us one thing. Mate, yeah, but be. like people will be. Yeah. They'll be wearing blue light blockers. They'll have nasal strips when they're going to sleep. They'll be making sure that every single meal they've got enough complete protein. They'll yeah. be doing everything, but then they don't wash their hands when they go for a shit. <laughs> it's like, what are you expecting? Like, you're going to no. get ill. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, you literally will just get ill if you're not keeping on top of personal hygiene. Yeah. So, yeah, that is something that is so, so simple. Make sure to wash your hands after you go for a shit. Yeah simple as that that's the title of the video (laughs) but no it's true like that is one thing that i'm like always really strict on and like even before covid i was pretty strict on that anyway and like i very very rarely get ill like i can't remember the last time i was ill i wasn't ill throughout the entire of my prep i haven't been ill afterwards yeah and i'm not putting it just down to that no but like i'm very careful with that like even when i go out like if i go out shopping or something like and i've like touched different things like i'll say to shannon have you got hand sanitizer like I have to be very careful. If I know I've touched something, I won't touch my mouth or touch yeah. my face or touch my nose, like because I'm like I'm always conscious, always consciously thinking. And maybe it's a little bit over the top, but I never get ill. Yeah, like very, very rarely. And, and also, like there's other things you sleep in a consistent. Yeah, sort of, of course. Time. Like, but like, yeah, that is one. Yeah. What, that is one massive thing that people neglect. Like, if you're doing all the other things well, but you neglect that. Oh mate, like, when why I would you neglect to... something that's so? I simple? almost, I almost forgot. Like, I went to the so I had the team off at meetup, and I must have like fist bumped or shook hands with. 25 yeah. people like 20 plus people that were my clients then people in the gym and then we went for food and I, I literally said to everybody I'm gonna go wash my hands because I need I'm not gonna just sit there and think oh well you know everyone sat down like I need to go wash my hands yeah. because I'm not like I fist bumped everybody yeah. like I've shook hands like I again and then I'm not you're gonna, grabbing a burger yeah, or whatever. yeah exactly and I'm eating food like it's very easy it's very easy in the gym world to be like oh post-workout meal let me pick up some cereal let me dip some rice cakes yeah. or whatever and your, your hands are going in your face eat like, cereal with your hands yeah no, but like pick, you know, you could pick out some bits of cereal. Um, you could pick out <laughs> little bits of cereal. You could you could pick out little bits of cereal. You know what I mean? So like actually washing your hands, staying on top of hygiene. Uh, I think that is just something that is so easy, but like people neglect and yeah. like 
illness and injury are two of the biggest things that are going to interrupt your progress yeah and if you don't have 10 seconds to wash your hands properly but you're doing everything else like just fucking do it yeah something i always think as well and this again might be again me overthinking um it's something i always do the second i'm done and i get home i change my clothes immediately yeah. and that's probably maybe from a skin quality standpoint maybe not just general kind of hygiene but i couldn't imagine being like sitting like in my training gear like doing check-ins or being on my laptop yeah, or like, like sitting in, in bed cold sweat yeah for, like, like no three chance hours yeah like it, my yeah. skin would be awful i would not I'd, I'd have loads of spots so i wouldn't like i wouldn't feel good yeah. so like changing your clothes showering like almost not you know, it doesn't have to be immediately but at least changing into a fresh yeah, set that also then you just can shower like say, later. makes you feel good yeah in terms of skin quality and everything anyway yeah so that'd be that um if we're going through nutrition so again, a lot of people, festive period, you eat a bunch of shit on Christmas, you feel bad the following day, you then have leftovers, you might eat two meals because your fats are higher, you're not gonna be digesting your food. Try, I try and say to clients, like try and keep the same sort of structure, but just be clever. If you're, let's say, in a post prep phase, and, you're, and I've had this for a few clients, unfortunately, where they'll have like their normal post-workout meal. They train, like let's say, on Christmas Day or maybe Boxing Day or whatever. They have their normal post-workout meal, but then they'll have two or three extra meals. Yeah. But it's like, you're not going to feel good regardless. But then also, I'd rather you eat, but that doesn't mean you have to eat a lot of calories. Having some regular protein feedings, making sure you've got a good amount of, let's say, sodium that's not just coming through shit food, or making sure you're actually properly hydrating and properly hydrating around the, the meals. How easy is it to wake up on a day where you've like, you don't feel the best you've had too much and you're like i don't really need any water i feel like i'm that yeah. thirsty you know i think there's two ends to the spectrum so like yeah. people will either over eat or under eat and yeah. either or can basically create you know the, the a stressed out body yeah you end up getting yeah. ill from it like if you're drastically overeating you know your body's having to digest a hell of a lot more food than it usually would your heart rate's going to be elevated your blood pressure's going to be elevated these things are going to induce sort of cortisol levels being increased, yeah. putting you at a greater risk of getting ill. Likewise, you then under eat drastically. That's also going to be a stressor on the body. Let's say you, you almost basically have a day of under eating because you've over eaten the day before. You create this kind of binge and restrict cycle. Your body hates that's that. a big body Yeah, that's a big like stressor that, yeah. on the body. Again, creates a risk of, of getting ill. So trying to have a little bit more... Consistency. Yeah, and stability. almost like finding that homeostasis. So you're going to eat a bit more over the Christmas period. Of course, that's inevitable. But if you've gained 10, 15 pounds over Christmas, you've gone overboard. Like, yeah. you don't need to do that. If you gain three to five pounds, like, yeah, you've probably gained a little bit there, but, you know, some of it's going to come off. A few pounds will be fat. A couple of pounds will be food volume and water retention. Yeah. That'll come off. You're not going to feel horrendous for that, but... No. If you're drastically overeating or drastically undereating to combat that, yeah, they're That's both the worst. they're both yeah stresses Especially on the Especially when you've been in a diet phase recently, recently yeah. because your body and your probably your mind as well without realizing will probably freak out by the sheer kind of uptake of calories and then restriction. It's easily like, done, like, and it's, it's oh, it's very, very easy. You weigh yourself. Show. You weigh yourself post, let's say you post show. You're a few weeks post show, a few months. You weigh yourself and you're a few pounds up. You it's instant to think okay, I could eat less today. I don't need to eat the same as I did yesterday. Let's see if I had a nice meal the day before. But the problem is, and you probably freak out, your body gets stressed because you under eat. You need calories, but you've over it on a certain day. And that's where like, you could break things down. And it's the reason why I think like banking calories can be fucking stupid if you're an idiot yeah. with it. Like you Have can bank well. calories. Yeah, you can break down calories, but especially if your body or your mind is somewhat sensitive, last thing you need to do is think, I'm going to restrict for a few days to lead up. Then I'm going to binge and overeat. Then I'm going to restrict. Yeah, your weekly calories might be the same but i can guarantee internally you're not going to feel good for it the way yeah. i say to clients is like if you're going to bank calories like generally i wouldn't be looking at any more than like 10 to 20 percent so yeah. if you're on let's say like 3,000 calories don't yeah. be trying to save any more than like 500 couple, yeah, maximum hundred, yeah. like yeah like so like what like yeah. 300 to 600 let's say yeah. you let's say for two three days you pulled down to two and a half thousand calories yeah. like you're not drastically restricting no. there and then you've saved yourself 1500 calories for your christmas dinner but if like, you pull down to 1500 and you're like i've got four and a half thousand yeah, calories exactly. to play with you will feel awful and you'll probably actually binge more than four and a half yeah, thousand you'll wake up the following day and you will literally be a mess and you'll it'll just be a bit of a nightmare and then as well when it comes to we're talking about food it comes to alcoholic consumption so a lot of people will drink and this is again something i try and say is just don't be an idiot you don't have if you're sat around this is something i find a bit embarrassing but again maybe it's my opinion if you're sat around the family with the family and you're like pissed at like 4 p.m on christmas day <laughs> what are you doing man get a grip like this is something i feel like you probably do when you're like 17 and like your mum's gone you can have a drink if you want yeah. and you've just had like a whole bottle of baileys or whatever but baileys is good yeah i couldn't imagine like just drinking to sounds a like you're speaking where, from experience there. Yeah, did that drink. happen yeah, I, was no, six, I think I was sixteen. I think, my mum allowed me a drink, and I just got. I think when it comes to alcohol consumption, like 
what I'll say to, to my clients is like, if you can make sure that you don't feel horrendous the next day, like then you've, you've probably managed it pretty well. Yeah. Like, so you might have had a few drinks, but you've drank some water in between and you've drank plenty of water before going to bed and then you rehydrate well in the morning. Yeah. You know, you've not gone crazy. But if you literally are drinking just for the sake of getting pissed, yeah. you again, if, if you're somebody who's wanting to, if you're somebody who's watching this video or listening to this, you obviously care about your health and fitness. You obviously want to make progress. Alcohol doesn't really align with that. Yeah like especially in large amounts yeah. yeah even in moderation it's not conducive towards your goals but you know having a couple of drinks on christmas absolutely fine just you don't need to go absolutely crazy with it um and then yeah in terms of like you could be looking at things like food quality and hydration etc like make sure you're still drinking plenty of water throughout the day you're going to be more full so you're probably going to forget to drink as much yeah. so maybe you know get yourself a, a big jug for example um to make sure that you're drinking enough fluid um and then in terms of food quality, like a lot of people will have digestive issues over this time of year because you're eating different food. Um, you but that be... also comes from not moving because a lot of people, we spoke about this on the last podcast, didn't we? Like the one we did last week on Christmas. Did we? I think so, yeah. We, you, you said you went for a walk on Christmas morning. Yeah, it's just like, nice. I feel good uh, for it. I had some clients where it's like, they, I looked at their sheets and they did steps, yeah, 600 yeah. steps. And it's like, have you literally just walked downstairs and then just to the o- toilet? Open presents all yeah, day. Yeah, open <laughs> presents all day. I just ate. Because again, like that's just going to skew things when it comes to like consistency. And also at the same time, like how you just feel. Like if I got to 4, 5, 6 p.m. and I hadn't gone outside, I would feel so unproductive and I'd probably feel worse for it. And the following yeah. day, it's going to be a bit of a mess. Your circadian rhythm is slightly out of whack. Your routine's out of whack. And like, I'm not going to say to you, okay, you have to go to the gym and do some fasted cardio and get some steps in. Be like, it's Christmas. I need to keep my routine the same. But like, just make sure not yeah, to Yeah, just go on idiot. a short just, walk. Yeah, go for you a walk. You feel better for yeah. it anyway. Like, yeah. But yeah, I think a lot of people, and again, it's not just about Christmas, but a lot of people will have digestive issues because of an influx in calories, yeah. probably more fiber because a Christmas dinner for most people is quite a high fiber meal. Yeah. Um, alcohol consumption, which has a, a big impact on digestion. Yeah. So all those things, again, it, with that, just don't stress. Don't be thinking, I've got to change my routine or eat loads less or anything. Just get back to your normal routine. Make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Get back to the normal meals that you know digest well, that you yeah. were having just before Christmas. Don't go and drastically change anything. Um, sleep is a massive one. So generally, again, over the the social period of the festive time like your sleep routine will probably change a lot of people will be off work so they start going to bed later and later and later and getting up later and later because they don't have that same yeah. routine in the morning not only does that make it really difficult when you're back at work you know if you've gone from getting up at 11 a.m and then you have to be up at six again oh, you know, be a nightmare. It's, yeah, it's, yeah you feel like shit for it so you need to maintain that routine what i say to clients is like keep your same sleep time keep your same wake time at least within like an hour or two so that when you do have to go back to it, you're getting, you've been shock. getting up at eight instead of six. Yeah. That's not that different, no, no, difficult, no. but five hours different is massive. So, you know, you might, instead of going to bed at 10 and getting up at six, you're going to bed at midnight because your family's around, you're staying, staying up a bit later, you're playing games, but you're still having some form of a routine. Yeah. yeah you're not just sort of staying up for the sake of staying up and then wondering why you're, you're getting ill. not putting an alarm yeah. on and just waking up late. Yeah, or yeah. you're trying to get up at the same time, but you're getting three hours less sleep every night and then yeah. you're wondering why you're getting ill. So sleep is a big one. I also would say stress like stress you naturally chill out a lot of people are overstressed in the build up to Christmas when you relax your body usually is more susceptible to get yeah. and then also at the same time getting back to it you almost like a lot of people park their work completely they don't think about it the first week back in January uh, they're like they hate oh my it, god yeah. I feel so bad I've, I've missed out on gym sessions and it's almost a case where like a lot of people that we find that get ill usually are massively in a case where their routine's all over the place they're getting up at different times their sleep's all over the place they're also really stressed Where and it's almost like inconsistent stress if you're always quite stressed you get used to it but if it's inconsistent stress where it's like some days you're stressed some well, days it's you're like not, if you're it's a yo-yo working effect. a job that you really yeah. don't like and every weekend you like completely forget about it yeah. and then it comes around to monday i'll have clients who like are in a job that they may be unhappy in and we're chatting about how they can maybe work on that or get out of it yeah. every sunday night their sleep's awful because they're just yeah. stressing about being back at work it's just like that's something in when you're looking at it from a bigger picture you've got to think about your longer term goals and think is this really what i want to do longer term if i'm not happy obviously you've got to make money but that's something to definitely think about and there are things that i like chat with clients about, yeah. it's like about have a think you know what can you do that's productive towards changing job in the long term for you yeah. to be a bit happier and a bit healthier yeah um but yeah we've covered like things like sleep stress nutrition personal hygiene should we do a small one on supplementation yeah i was gonna say so like vitamins, supplementation 
I, I would say on a, a daily basis, like I'd be recommending that you have vitamin C anyway, yeah, one thousand to two thousand milligrams on a daily basis. A multivitamin, if you if if you don't have, I mean, you can't really go wrong with like a low dose multivitamin. I wouldn't have like a really highly dosed one, but if you've got like plenty of fruit and veg in your diet, I generally say to my clients like, I want you to have one serving of fruit or veg with each meal. Um, and when I would say one serving, I'd generally class that as about 100 grams for most yeah. people. So if you have 100 grams of fruit and or veg with every meal, different colors, etc., you're probably going to be covering a wide variety of micronutrients anyway. So then a, a multivitamin probably just going to make sure you're covering your bases there. Yeah. But even just doing that, like a lot of people won't have any fruit or any veg in their diet yeah. and then wonder why they're getting ill yeah. or they won't drink any more than a liter of water a day and wonder why they're getting ill. Yeah. It's like, you know, your body needs these things yeah you know your body needs micronutrients your body needs water it needs these things to just be healthy and to fuel your immune system so doing the basic things like that are so so important but then you get neglected and then supplementation outside of those if you were to notice that you're getting ill i'd be looking at you could get yourself something like a, a liposomal curcumin liposomal glutathione things like that that are basically like high dose vitamin c and almost like immune system yeah, boosters, boosters if yeah. you like um you don't need to take them necessarily year round i mean you could do if you were to want to take them let's say year round but generally i'd say when you notice any signs creeping up you've got a bit of a sore throat a bit of a sniffle you could implement those like shannon started feeling a little bit ill the other day so i was like right have 2000 milligrams of vitamin c with your final meal mm. and just drink plenty of water she woke up and she was like i feel yeah. feel pretty good so like, yeah yeah cause, and, and that night she didn't go to the gym because she was like, I, 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 yeah. I need to rest. We should also mention, we didn't even mention training. Yeah, so we'll training-wise, training Tra well, training anything, and yeah, training. training's one of those where I'd argue a lot of times, like as much as we said maintain routine, like please don't be a pussy. If you feel a little bit, like let's say we're talking 5 or 10% a bit di different or a bit off, still probably train, but just listen to your body in the session. But also at the same time, if you're like, I'm really fucking like battered, like, I don't feel great. The last thing you want to do is go to the gym and be like, right, time for maximum yeah, effort I've deadlifts. Got to try and progress. Yeah, like, I've got to try and progress. Like, there's many ways to skin a cat. You could easily go in and just do a pump session. You could do a devolume session. You could just go in and again, I try to say to clients like, if you want to go and train, and if you like, see how you feel. Like, do you want to train? If you want to train, cool, go and train. But just don't be an idiot. Don't do too much. Listen to your body. That doesn't mean you have to plan a de like, devolume or whatever. Like, just see what you can just do in the session. Yeah, auto regulate either. session to session, or exercise to exercise, set to set, rep to rep, exercise to exercise, and you'll be fine. However. At the same time, like, are you going to lose much progress if you take a day or two off? And most of the time, let's say if it aligns to a rest day, most people with our clients and how people train, you're probably going to have a maximum of two or three sessions on the trot. Let's say you get ill on the second or third session, you're feeling a bit down, take back to back rest days, you'll probably feel wicked, you'll probably be better actually getting back to the gym, your session quality is going to be better, and you'll be all good. But the training side of things is something you'll probably get better with with experience. I probably didn't take a session off from illness, maybe up until like, maybe like not last year, maybe the year before, so like 2022. I used to always just train. I feel awful for a long period of time. Now it's like, okay, I know how I feel if I can train, and if I can't, I'm like, I'm just gonna take a day off. Or, and you know that you get back to feeling good pretty yeah, quickly yeah, if exactly. you just listen to your body. Yeah, exactly. So just listen to your body. At the end of the day, muscle's not gonna be built in one session. If you, d if you usually train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and you just train Tuesday, Wednesday, and you have Sunday, Monday off, cool you're not going to lose that much you can easily catch up the volume later on and again muscles not going to be growing in one session so if we were to kind of have a bit of a conclusion i feel like if we were to go from like wake up times to going to bed upon what you'd want you'd want a consistent wake up time you'd want to eat a well-balanced diet with multiple protein feedings sodium potassium electrolytes kind of in a sufficient way either through diet supplementation and then likewise hydration would be nailed that would be most likely for most people, females, maybe three liters minimum. For males, four to probably eight liters, depending on how big you are, what your kind of hydration requirements would be. Training-wise would be regulated based off your usual structure and routine. If you're not feeling the best, probably minimize training volume down to either a baseline amount of volume or no training at all. When it comes to supplementation, as Finn mentioned, I'd be kind of implementing them probably consistently and upping it when appropriate. So have like a baseline amount of maybe vitamin C, vitamin D, K2, so on and so forth, and then up it when appropriate. And then when it comes to, let's say, going to bed, go to bed at your same normal time. Try not to be overly stressed. Work upon stress management away from that when you have time to chill, chill. And hopefully you don't get ill. Good summary. I think that is a good summary, yeah. I generally use like a scale with my clients. So like I will say... If you're, let's say, imagine like a zero to 10, so zero being there's no signs of illness, you yeah. feel absolutely fine, then obviously nothing changes. You just crack on as normal. 
Hey, mate, I feel really fine. I feel absolutely fine. Do you reckon I should change anything? Should, 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 take today, yeah, today should I take today off? Yeah, should I take today off? Because the scale. I'm a 10 out of 10, but maybe I might not train. Uh, zero out of 10. If you're a 10 out of 10, that, that's oh, on, you're on your deathbed. You're dead. Yeah. You're dying. So, 10 out of 10 would be you're on your deathbed. Yeah. Zero out of 10 is no signs of, of any illness coming on at all. Yeah. So like generally what I'll say to clients is if you're anything above like a 7, like yeah. Oh, yeah. do not train, yeah, do not rest, train. Yeah. just focus on hitting calories. Don't even worry about the exact food you're having because your yeah. appetite's probably going to be in the bin. Yeah, hit your calories. Yeah, get calories in because a lot of times people don't eat, and then it's just going to take longer to yes. recover because you're not fueling your body. So eat and and eat what you can. Usually, liquid slash semi solid calories. So things ben like and Jerry's protocol. Well, things like yeah. milkshakes, things like yeah. protein shakes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, soup, uh, oats, cream of rice, things that are easy. Yogurt, like they can all be really helpful to soothe your throat if you've got a sore throat, and also like to actually have an appetite for those kind of more like smooth foods yeah. um and they're easier to get in as well than chewing loads when you've got no energy um so that's if you're above like a seven to ten don't train don't do your cardio don't do your steps like literally just rest like yeah. because you're battered if you're anything under like a three like zero to three you're fine just crack on as normal yeah if you then creep into that four five six kind of range that's where you've got to be smart yeah. and generally what i'll say is when you're in that range don't worry about cardio reduce your expenditure to what feels comfortable so you don't, let's say you've got a 12k step goal like do eight to ten like just reduce it slightly let's say you do cardio three days a week you know not doing any cardio that week while you're recovering isn't going to be massively detrimental to your progress and then training auto regulate like we said yeah so just base it on how you're feeling go in maybe take it as a slightly d volume session or an rir session um just based on the movements maybe just your compounds you'll do at d volume your isolations you'll do as normal maybe you just try and match rather than trying to progress like within that range yeah. so that's kind of how i approach it and that's how i recommend clients to approach it um and again implementing all those other sort of day-to-day -day actions are going to help reduce the likelihood that you're going to get ill because at this time of year it is seeming to be that a lot of people are getting ill um and i think if you're not implementing all those kind of things that we've spoken about you've already really got yourself to yeah play. you almost yeah. need to question okay there's things i could be doing better and again like i said right at the start people are doing like everything possible to make as much progress as possible but if you're missing out on things that are going to reduce your risk of getting ill that's a massive thing if you're getting ill every month and missing three to five sessions which happens a lot yeah, more than that's going to drastically yeah. hinder your progress it's like if you were getting injured every week every session yeah you wouldn't just keep doing what you're doing you'd assess and go why am i getting injured oh it's because my form here wasn't very good so yeah. it's the same with why am i getting ill oh it's because my sleep routine's not been great or i'm not eating good enough quality food or but i'm bro, stressed I've out got, all the I've time got a, yeah buddy immune system I just, yeah, I got yeah, buddy immune system. No yeah. matter what, I just it's crack on. Too yeah, bad I have because I'm never. Yeah, really. buddy immune system. Or yeah. you, or you just build different, guys. Like yeah. you build different. Yeah. Maybe, you, maybe you don't. Just listen to this video. Yeah, don't listen to us. Do exactly the opposite, and you'll you'll be fine. But in all seriousness, if you're not doing or implementing some of those things, then yeah. and and you're noticing that you're getting ill quite a lot, then definitely try it because again, it's such a big component of our ability to make progress is yeah. staying ill and injury free, or you know reducing the risk of getting ill or getting injured. Yeah. So guys, save the video or like add to watch to later so the next time you watch this video, implement it and you won't be ill. Hopefully you enjoy it. Never get ill again. Never get ill again. Thanks to the Once Renewing we're Podcast. Not, we're not doctors, by the way. No, we're not. So if you do get ill, it's not our fault. But maybe <laughs> listen to us. Right, that'll be that. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.